In this lesson, we're going to just take a peek at uh, Virtual Chemistry Lab 4-2 Precipitation Reactions. It's the second virtual experiment, and I just wanted to walk through a little bit and show you how to uh, manipulate the general chemistry laboratory. So all I have on my screen so far is I've you know clicked my VCL icon to open up the um, program, Virtual Chemistry Lab. I will click the workbook, and we are in 4-2, so I'm going to just highlight that section and open precipitation reactions. Manipulating the virtual chem lab by that lab book opens the um, program directly to the experiment that you'll be conducting. So it's just very handy to do it that way. Over on this screen we have the actual handout that we're filling out. So step one, virtual chem lab, we selected precipitation reactions from our list of assignments. We opened the lab with the lab book. And what we see across here on the table is um, the list of solutions. Um, notice that we have some pH solutions, we have some acids, we have some bases, and we have some salts. Alrighty. What I want us to notice is um, we're being asked to, and over here I'm pointing at now in this area, to react each of the cations across the top of our grid with the list of anions going down the grid. So we'd like to react silver nitrate with sodium carbonate, silver nitrate with sodium sulfide, and so forth. We move to the next cation. So we react each of these negative ions with each of the positives. And all we're being asked to do here is record observations. If a precipitate forms, we should see evidence of a chemical change. So let's model how to go about getting started. First of all, we're going to need to go into the stock room. So I click into that area, and I see the list of positive ions all on the shelf. Alrighty, so we entered the stock room by clicking on the uh, stock room window. And now what we need to do is drag a test tube and place it in the metal stand. So here is the test tube area. If I click and drag it to the metal stand, I now see a close-up. Nothing's in there. You then want to click on, and we'll just pick this first guy, the silver ion in the shelf, to add it to the test tube, and then click Done. So what we end up doing is just simply click on the positive. You don't have to click and drag it. You just click it. And notice now that it has a little bit of that silver ion, silver nitrate, sitting in the test tube, and we'll click Done. What that will do is bring it out to the lab for us. So notice the test tube disappeared, and here we are at the lab. So I just click to go back there. And here it is sitting in the, um, the stand for the test tubes. What we want to do is actually have enough test tubes to run all the trials at once. I don't want to have to click back and forth into the stock room every time I need silver ion. And notice here, over on this side again, we have one, two, three, four, five trials we have to run for, A, B, C, D, E. So I need a total of five test tubes. What I'm able to do is take this button, see this red arrow, this divide button? And when I, when I, I first have to click it to the metal stand, so I've moved it over to the metal stand, and now I'm going to divide it a total of four more times. One, here, here, pouring, two, three, four. Now I have a total of five test tubes with the silver ion. One in the metal stand and four more in the test tube rack waiting for the reagents. Now what I'll do is test the negative ions into each of these metal or in each of these silver ions. So first of all, kind of looking over here, we need silver ion with carbonate ion, Na2CO3. Notice that this guy is down here on the, on the lab bench itself. When I place my cursor over the sodium carbonate, it turns into a dropper. All I, need, all I need to do is click on the sodium carbonate, and it already added it for me. So now I'm seeing the evidence of chemical change. This is the window that's um, you know, making it much closer for our view. Do we see evidence that, yes, indeed, a precipitate changed? So back over to my data table for the letter A box, I'm going to record, what do you want to call that, kind of like a brown yellowish solid. So definite evidence of change. I just will probably just need to keep that just in case, so I drag it back to that test tube rack. And let's bring a second silver ion test tube to the metal rack. Next one we have to add is sodium sulfide, Na2S. That's sitting up here. Notice when I put my cursor over that bottle, it turns into a dropper. So I just click right on sodium sulfide, and it adds it together with a blown-up view. 
Na2S with silver nitrate indeed is a positive test. So in my letter B, I would record, I'm going to call that like a grayish solid. Evidence of chemical change. Drag that over. Whoops. Put it into the test tube rack. There it goes. Click the third one over. Now we need to add sodium hydroxide, NaOH, sitting down here. So I just place my cursor over and click on that reagent bottle. Yep, that is a definite positive test. That's probably more of a brown solid. When I come to the next test tube, which is Na2SO4 with silver nitrate, that is sitting here. Notice what happens? Nothing. This to me is a negative test. No chemical change occurred. So for the letter D, I'm going to record no change. Just a physical blend, but no evidence of precipitation. And that will happen. That's why we're testing to find which ones indeed do precipitate. We have one more, and that's to add the sodium chloride. White solid formed. So NaCl with silver nitrate does indeed form a white solid precipitate. So I've done the silver ions for you. What we'll then do is just where, if you put your cursor over in this area where we have that red uh, disposal box, just press clear all, and all the test tubes have now been cleaned. We have to go back to the lab, and we need to go on to the second column, the lead ion, PB plus 2. Here it is. So remember, I have to drag out a test tube, fill it with the lead ion, make sure you press done, go back to the lab, and it's sitting here in a test tube rack. Drag it to the metal rack, divide it so that you have plenty of test tubes to run all five tests at once, and then just keep going. Go back to the lab bench and keep adding one at a time the negative ions recording your positive tests and your negative tests. Those are just as informative. Once you've completed your data table by going back and forth to the stock room, you have questions to process. Number three, what happens in grid space D? Well, we commented already, space D was a negative test. What other reactions give similar tests? Go back up into your data table and find where did no precipitation form? Is it necessary to write an equation for that? And the answer, of course, is no. We only write equations for positive tests. Number four, write balanced equations for all precipitation reactions. Now this, to, just so you see that this is molecular equations. Alrighty, so molecular equations, and you'll flip over. Notice that there's plenty of room for each one. And then the last thing you'll do is to write net ionic equations for each of the reactions that occurred as well. There is no in-between step, the complete ionic. You're moving from molecular directly to the precipitates, but only for the net ionic equations. And remember, do not write tests, do not write equations for negative tests. Good luck and enjoy.